Hi, I'm Connie Townsend, group fitness instructor with the Wenatchee Racket and Athletic Club, doing another at-home workout. Now today we're going to slow things down and really concentrate on our shoulder stabilizers. So it's a good day to take our time, do some therapeutic exercises that will strengthen our um, supporters and stabilizers in our shoulders. So when we do our big workouts, they're nice and stable. We're gonna start with a little bit of a warm up. Let's just uh, cross our arms, open out. So we're starting to get the shoulders warmed up a little bit. Right now, just keep the back still. Just opening and closing those arms. Starting to stretch in the back. This stretch in the chest. Now let's slow it down and round the back, tuck the chin, and then up and pull back. Exhale. Inhale. So you really feel the shoulder blades kind of pull apart when you come forward. Lots of mobility in the upper back, a lot of shoulder movement. We want to keep them flexible as well as stable. One more. Pull it back. Let's just reach up. So you're starting to feel a stretch kind of down your side a little. We're lengthening the spine. Try to start straightening those arms, reaching out through the fingertips. Four, three. All right. Now your feet are kind of wide. You're going to just let the arms hang. You're going to turn the shoulders, let the arms fling around. A bit of a rotation. Stretch around the torso, around the spine. You can kind of feel those stretches down into your hips even. Let the stress fall out of your fingertips. Just let the arms just dangle. Shoulder blades come down your back. Come on back to center. Let's roll the whole arm and shoulder forward and back. So now it's not just coming straight forward, chest height, but we're getting a rotation around the shoulder joint. Shoulder blades come up your back here and then back down your back. We want to really train a lot of movement into those shoulder blades. Now during the workout today will be some of the exercises are designed to train the shoulder blades to stay put as we use our arms and other exercises they'll be moving. They'll be retracting together. They'll be going up and down. So there's quite a bit of variety here. We're gonna use three different tools. We're gonna to use a long band with handles or one of those flat, uh, long, wide bands. We're gonna use a round band if we have it, and if you don't, you just take your long band and tie it. And then we'll use a really light pair of dumbbells or water bottles or cans of soup. All right, so this first one, we're not using any tools or resistance. We're gonna do a squat with a Y. So the arms are going up in a Y shape above the head, a V. Palms are forward. We're gonna push toward the ceiling and pull back. Now we're gonna do that in a squat. So sit and up. 
So your body weight is in your heels. Arms are straight. You're trying to pull them back as far as you can at the top. Now from the side, the back is straight. Your shoulders are back. We're just looking neutral with the head. Draw, drawing that navel toward the spine, of course. Your core muscles have to engage through all of this and they are responsible for holding your spine nice and neutral. So you are doing two things. You're reaching out through the fingertips, lengthening the arms. At the same time, you're pulling back. Three, two, and release them. Let's just kind of sit here for a moment, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, round the back, let things stretch and rest. Now these are exercises that work those finer muscles in the shoulders and the upper back. And so if you need to, maybe just do a few and then rest, shake it out a little, and then get back to it. That's perfectly great. The next one, no tools, but we're gonna use the wall. So we scoot up against the wall. Now your feet are quite a bit out from the wall because it's not, not a wall squat. You're gonna stay up, but we're gonna be out far enough where we, we can pull that navel back into the wall. So you would normally have a gap in your low back. We're gonna pull back, kind of tucks that tailbone under a little, all right? Now our upper back is against the wall, but we're gonna try to pull our shoulders back as well. And the back of your head is pulled back to lean against the wall. So just holding that position Navel pulled in, shoulders back, and head back. That's a lot of work to start with. And that one's a good one to do, like as you're watching TV or something, do this and then relax and then do it again. That's a good way to start aligning the spine and the connection with the spine with the pelvis and with the shoulders. So everything gets into alignment. And then those muscles strengthen to hold you there. All right, we're gonna add on. Arms are straight, palms facing the wall. All we're gonna do is hold that neutral, anchored position into the wall as one goes up, comes back, tries to touch a wall or pretend you are, and then the bottom arm is reaching down and pulling back. And then switch. So you're trying to lengthen out of those fingertips, trying to get the arm right beside the head, and you may not have the flexibility in your shoulders to do that. So you just pull back as far as you're able. This is one of those exercises where we're holding or training the, the body to stay still as our arms are in motion. Now you're feeling a lot of fatigue in the upper back, in the lower back. How about one more? Oh. Ooh. All right, let it rest a moment. You can always just kind of round. Now we're gonna stay against the wall. Anytime we're against the wall, we're pulling the navel toward the spine. Okay, let's go into a prisoner stance. So fingers lightly on the back of the head, elbows sticking out. Let's put the back of the head on the wall. Upper back is on the wall. Lower back is now pressed against the wall. Let's see if we can pull back and touch the wall with those elbows. Now, if you're built like me, I have a rotation and, and a lean in my spine. So I may not look very straight, but as far as what it can do, it's, it's pulling as straight as it can. We're pulling back. So your whole spine is pulled into the wall. Release, round, let it rest. And up and pull back. So 
Don't let that pelvis arch. Don't let the, the pelvis tilt so that it's the low back is away from the wall. Pull back, tuck the tailbone under. Ooh, you can feel so much work in the upper back, especially. All right, let's rest it. And then one more here. So I think we're gonna stay against the wall because we want to train the, the lower half of the spine to, or we wanna train the abdominals to keep the lower half of the spine anchored into the wall. So we're always drawing back. We're just gonna do some snow angels. So we're up, try to pull back, and you're just gonna slide down that wall and back up. So you're doing two things. Yes, you're moving up and down, but we're pulling those arms back. Now you may not be able to touch the wall. That's okay. That wall is there for us to shoot for. <laughs> That's our goal is to try to pull back to the wall. But once again, not letting the low back arch here. Keep that tailbone under just a little. Keep drawing the navel toward the spine. Okay, not very many. And that'll do. All right, come up off the wall. Now you can always just take a moment, stretch your back. Because that upper back does get fatigued. All right, this next section, we're gonna use the longer band. So, or if you have a bungee cord, that works perfectly great too. <laughs> now, I'm gonna put my hands through the handles because that keeps the handles from whacking me in, in the head. We're gonna be lay, uh, sitting back against the wall again. Remember to adjust, walk out far enough where it's pretty natural that your low back is pressed into the wall. Now remember the Y that we did overhead. We're gonna do those here. Okay, let's lean that head against the wall. Back is against the wall. Your hands are wide. Palms facing you to start. All right, we're gonna pull gently out on the band. Now not, not too hard. We don't want a lot of resistance. And we're just going to swing up. Trying to get back to the wall. Swing down. So a lot of things are happening. You're pulling out on the band, side to side, out, and that activates the sides of the shoulders. So you're getting a lot of shoulder muscles going, as well as those smaller stabilizing muscles. You're pulling the navel into the wall, which trains that core to activate. We've got a movement this time of up and down, and so it incorporates quite a few different muscles as your arm moves. Only do what you can. Just holding this position against the wall is a, is a tough thing. All right, last one. Come on down and rest around the back. So that's a Y. We're now gonna be making a T shape with the arms. So that's just straight out to the side. You're gonna be a T. So pull the navel back, head back, shoulder height, palms down. All right, now loosen it up. We wanna to try to go out to the side and get to the wall. So make sure you've got a pretty light band or make sure that it's really long and it's not very short. The shorter it is, the harder it is. Pulling back. So this is working in those shoulder blade muscles, but we are holding the shoulder blades against the wall so they're not getting a chance to really move. And that's what we want. We want the back of the shoulders and the back muscles to work without retracting those shoulder blades together. Last one there, rest it. We're gonna do that same thing, but we're in a different hand grip this time. So, take a moment, 
relax up there. And this time, it's kind of hard to do with a long band, but our hands are facing in, so thumbs are up. So lean your head back, pull the navel in, and then try to come out. So we're contracting in the rhomboids, in the lower trapezius, in the rear deltoids. Ooh. And once again, doing a whole lot of training for those abdominals. And one more. Ah. So one more thing in, with the long band, and then we'll trade for the round one. This is not a very long workout today because these are small muscle groups that really, we don't wanna fatigue them too badly. We're kind of working in that same area the whole time, and so it, they get fatigued quickly. All right, so let's see. We are going to do the pullover. And we just did that. So I guess we don't need to do that one. <laughs> oh, we're gonna be doing a low one. So, arms are low, head back, belly button pulled in. We're pulling out and then back to the wall. So you're pulling out the whole time once again, you have the sides of those shoulders pull, uh, working. And then try to pull back. So this one is not so much upper back, it's more mid back. Kind of the thoracic spine area. Now we do not want to let those shoulders tighten up. Keep the shoulder blades down, pull back. Pull back. A lot of different parts to the back and the shoulders. And so to stabilize them, we pretty we, we need to work quite a few things. Let's come back and try to hold that. Shoulders down, head back, belly button pull back. Ooh. And release. Got you felt a little bit coming up into the neck muscles as well. All right, we're gonna trade that for a round band, or you can just take your long one and tie it up. Pretty light, not too hard, not too much resistance. So once again, these are small muscle groups. We want to slowly build endurance in them and strength so that over time they can carry a, a bigger load. Okay, a wall row. So we're back in that position. We use the wall a lot to stabilize us and keep everything neutral. So we're gonna grip the band, palms facing in, so thumbs are up. And you can adjust how, wherever you're comfortable. That you can hold it a bit. Arms are out. We're going to just pull the upper arm back into the wall. And think about your shoulder blades not sliding up, but just holding steady. Your head is back against the wall. Your belly button's pulled back. So you can feel all the different muscle groups again. We've got the back of the shoulders, all the stabilizers around the rotator cuff. We are working in the rowing muscles, the rhomboids. Pull, how about this next one? We pull back and hold. Don't let the shoulders raise. In four, three, to release. Whew. Now, I'm not gonna do this one against the wall. 
We're just gonna stand. Give those legs a little bit of a break because I'll have to show you from the side. We're gonna do a scapula shoulder blade retraction. So that means those shoulder blades will come closer to the spine. All right, we're gonna grip the band again like we were doing. We're out in front. Now don't let the back round. You're nice and neutral here. We don't wanna uh, arch the back there either. So drawing the navel back, we'll put that pelvis in a proper position. When we're not tight. Those shoulder blades come down your back. All right, without bending the arms, we're going to pull out a little bit and then shoulder blades squeeze together. So you're pulling out the whole time. So pull it this way, okay? And then squeeze them together, release. Squeeze, release. So you notice how your arms get short and then long. But that's the action of the shoulder blades back behind you. And it's very difficult to keep those shoulders down. You don't want to start tightening up around in here. Down your back. benefit is you get all that deltoid because you're pulling out. You're working a little in your triceps as well. Okay, so back to the wall. Now remember that pullover we did when we were wide, up and down. Now we're going to be narrow doing the same thing. So grip it, palms face in, head back, belly button pull back. Pull out, up, can you reach the wall? And down. You can inhale. Exhale. If one hand reaches the wall before the other one does, that means your rib cage is probably rotated a little, like mine. Keep that navel drawn back into the wall. and keep pulling out. We're leaned against the wall so that we keep those shoulder blades in place. It's kind of the trick we use to help remind the brain to not let the shoulder blades move. One more. Whew. Come up off the wall. Let those things rest. And one small exercise here. Not much movement. This would be an external rotation. Now this one is one of the common exercises for the rotator cuff. That's four muscles back around and under and over your shoulder blades. And so we're just going to rotate outward. Now away from your center. So it's an external rotation. Now the trick is to keep your upper arm from leaving your body. So that's where we're squeezing in tight. We also have to be mindful of our shoulder blades, not rising up, slide them down your back, loosen the knees a little so we don't arch the low back and pull the navel in. That is always a necessity. Okay, palms facing in. All right, squeeze into your sides and just try to open and close. So it's a pivot, it's a rotation. Your upper arm actually is rotating, holding it steady to our body. Neutral neck, keep the shoulders relaxed. So it's a very intense exercise with a lot of fatigue back there. But we need to take the time to strengthen especially the rotator cuff complex back there so that we can use our arms better. One more. The stronger the stabilizers, the better we can use our arms and have good range of motion and be able to lift things above the head or away from the body. Okay, we're gonna trade out now for dumbbells. 
and we're almost done. So it's a quick workout today. All right, so I'm just using twos. It really doesn't take much weight at all. In fact, you can even just use the weight of your arm if this is bothering anything in your shoulder. Okay, we're gonna do a standing Y again. This time we're not squatted down. We're gonna stand and we're gonna do our Y where we pull back, so right beside the head, and then we're gonna come down, and then back up, and down, okay? So arms are straight, palms face you to start with. Nice and loose in the knees so that we can keep the pelvis neutral. Belly button pulled in. We're coming up into a V shape overhead, a Y, you look like a Y, <laughs> pull back. Now down, and up, and back down. So you're combining a couple different exercises, but it all has to be really thought out. As you're pulling those arms back, don't let the low back arch. Keep the tailbone under, keep that navel drawn in. Pulling back, 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 and then continue to pull back as you come down. Up, down. So it's not much weight. We don't want to hurt the shoulders. We want to strengthen them, strengthen them and stabilize them. Over time, if you were to do this one a lot, then you could probably increase your weight. But the weight is not the point. You just want a little bit. One more time. Up and come down. Okay. So another very powerful exercise for the back of the shoulders, the rotator cuff complex, is a lifted up and down motion. Thumb up, thumb down. We're going to actually add a lift to it. So, your, thumb, your palms are facing forward to start. Now, bring the shoulders back and down, so they're down your back, and we wanna keep them that way. So if you need to, you can lean back against the wall again. That helps your brain to remember to keep the shoulders steady. I'm gonna go thumbs up, coming up, no higher than the shoulders and then thumb down, coming down. So you can do this standing or leaning against the wall. If you're leaning, you're drawing the navel into the wall. It's kind of difficult to control the arms and make sure they come to the right height, the same height. You gotta think about those shoulder blades not rising up your back. arms at the same speed and everything so there's a lot of brain work going on as well and come on down okay I lied there is one more and it's a rotator cuff exercise common one we're gonna we're going to face the palms to the body but then we're gonna turn the thumbs even further in. Now, those dumbbells are angled out to the corner. We're going to lift only as high as you're able and down. Shoulders don't come forward at the top, so we're not rounding. And we're not lifting in the shoulders. Keep the shoulder blades down. It's hard to keep those thumbs facing down. Neutral pelvis. All right, we're going to use those dumbbells now to stretch, but let's turn them palm in, lift them out from the body and circle a little. That'll get everything in the shoulders, 
involved. Shoulders down. And other direction. So see, it doesn't take much weight to really fatigue all those fine shoulder muscles. Now tomorrow you might be a little sore <laughs> in your shoulders. That's good. That means we broke down those muscle fibers so that they can grow stronger the next day when we rest. All right, let's lift those shoulder blades up your back. Back down. Let's tilt the head to one side. The weight is pulling those shoulders down. And then center, let's pull up and let them drop. Tilt just right off center. Don't turn your head. And center. Let's pull them back behind a bit. Don't let the back arch. And turn. Try to see the wall behind you. And other side. Now come back to center. Let's just let them kind of drop behind the hips a little. That pulls those shoulders down. Tilt the head forward. You'll feel a lot of fatigue in the upper back and maybe even up into the neck a little bit. Because as we do those shoulder stabilizing exercises, we still have a tendency to bring our neck muscles into it a little bit. It just takes a long time to, to learn to separate the neck muscles from the shoulder muscles. So you were probably a little tense. All right, let's set them down. Now, we usually do an upper back stretch by rounding over, we're gonna get a little bit more of those shoulder blade muscles involved. Let's cross our hands, put our palms together, lace the fingers, hang them in front, tuck the chin, and just push down toward the floor. You don't need to come down very far. Try to straighten the arms. And then back up. Let's do a prisoner stance stretch again, like we did in the beginning, but this time it's not for strengthening, it's for stretching the front so that if this is flexible, more flexible, then you can use those good stabilizers back there to pull the shoulders back where they belong. Pull, pull, pull. Get a good stretch in the front of the body. And then bring them down. Let's put the palms in the low back. Let the shoulders drop and try to pull the elbows together behind you. So this not only stretches the front of the body, but it activates all those muscles that we were just working. It kind of gets those nerve endings fired up. It contracts back there. It tells your body, this is how your posture should be. All right, now just let them slide down. They're slightly behind you. You have good posture. You're upright. Your shoulder blades are down your back. I'm Connie, and I'll see you again.